Hi guys, welcome back. Today we are continuing on with and finishing the makeover to my front hallway, front entryway, and staircase. It's many places in one. Welcome back to the series where I challenge myself to use thrifted materials and a love of all things retro to DIY our family home from this farmhouse to that 70s house. So if you joined me last week, you'll remember that we had this stunning circular window installed into the front hallway. It's giant. It is what dreams are truly made of. This is what dreams are made of. And it's already brought so much natural light into this corner that was pretty dark before. I then cleaned up the walls, painted them all a fresh white, and installed three different pendant lights to create this sort of mid-century inspired chandelier moment that hangs above the stairs. Oh, <laughs> and we took down the old railing. So today, we're gonna build a new one. So last week I called and I got some parts on order for the new railing, but we never really talked about the plan, so let's discuss. I have behind me in my house this massive modular mid-century wall shelf, and I'm taking a lot of inspiration from it. The supports are this square tubing, and it's got wood slats as the actual shelves, and I just really like that combination of the wood and the black metal. So I'm thinking we carry that over to the new railing, which is right beside this shelf. So the plan right now is to take two pieces of flat steel bar and then place some square rungs between them all. This will be strong, this will be structural, this will be beautiful, but we'll finish it all off with a nice thick wooden top piece for the whole railing. Now, the thing about working with metal is I've never really done it and I'm not gonna glue this together. So I think this is actually going to involve for the first time for me, a bit of welding. Now I'm super lucky that Austin has experience here and even has a welder in his shop. So once we have all the pieces, we're gonna get to play around and hopefully bring this dream railing to life. Did I ever think I'd have a dream railing? <laughs> just adult things, you know? We just got the call that the steel is ready to be picked up for the railing, so we're heading there now. We're in Austin's truck. How? We're gonna put it together after we get it all back home. <laughs> That's yet to be determined, but one step at a time. We're definitely gonna need to paint these once they're done, but looking good. And then this will be the top rail and the bottom rail. Okay, this is the, the flat piece of metal that we got, right? Yep. And it's gonna fit in where the old railing was, and then the rungs are gonna go to that. So we just gotta figure out the spacing. How many rungs did we get? We got 28, 28. right? And we think that's a bit more than we need. I think it's one more than we need. So the code says that you can't have more than a four inch gap between. Mm -hmm. Cause the problem I think is, it's not obviously perfect math that we're gonna be able to fit perfect amount spaced evenly with a four inch space every time if we want the rungs to go exactly to each end, which we do. So there's going to be some funny math involved. I don't love when there's a lot of math involved in projects, but <laughs> it's got to be done. So there's, these are one inch and this has to start at the end. You know that. And then there has to be a four inch space. Uh, less than four inch. You have to do centers. Here, hold on. Let's use my method. Math is hard. What's your method? What, what are these? Well, we can find out which one works the best. Learning blocks. Spacing is looking good. We're ready for the rungs. Okay. We're in Austin's workshop now, and we have to attach them via welding. I've never done that before. It's fun. What do I need to know? What's the first step? The ground. Okay. Done. So this is the machine here. Well, it uses that. gas, and then this is the the metal filament. And that goes. It goes. The wire comes through here. 
comes out the tip here, mm -hmm. feed the weld, and then gas comes out of here to protect the weld. Okay. For when it's hot. So, why do we need the ground? Because the electricity will go from here into the metal, through the metal, through the ground, back into the machine. It needs to complete the circuit. So it's like a constant. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I see. So, we're going to take our rungs, place them where we've marked out. Okay. How are you feeling about it? It looks good. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty straight. <laughs> Just gotta finish up the weld so it's nice and strong. I thought this would take us a lot I'll longer. I'll admit it. I was a little nervous <laughs> at one point when the <laughs> bars were all wonky. It does look like a prison though, doesn't it? It does look like a prison, but I think it's missing the wood. The wood will make it feel right. Would you still love me if I was in jail? <laughs> Depends what for, I guess. No, I think this is looking good. And I mean, let's just talk about whoever did these welds here. Master welder really knows what they're doing. Is that yeah. I'll say, for me not knowing how to weld and what I did just now, this is way sturdier than the previous <laughs> Yeah, the wooden railing? <laughs> Feeling good. Okay, so welding actually went pretty well. We have the railing all together. It's not finished yet it could use some more securing and obviously it needs to be cleaned up and painted but we're gonna bring it into the house and make sure that it fits and it looks good because now's the time to do any more adjusting before it's fully finalized okay that? holy crap that's good we know it fits which is excellent it's time to get this cleaned up and ready to be painted because I want it to be like that black color. Welds are sandable, just like wood is, but because it's metal, it requires a much more intense sandpaper and a much more intense sander. So we have a grinder here that's hooked up to an air compressor and basically has some really intense sandpaper on the end and I'm gonna grind all of the welds that are a little too thick down so that we can paint over top of it. I've never used this before, but Austin gave me the very quick rundown and we're gonna do our best. Let me just show you an example of something we'd wanna sand down. So here are the welds, but they stick out a little farther than this top bar. And if I wanna put a wood piece over top, which I do, this is gonna be in the way. So we need to file this off. And down here at the bottom, this is not getting anything covering it. So I just wanna clean this up so that when we paint over top of it, it doesn't look messy hopefully but a little bit of obvious welding is okay because that's kind of the look of the whole thing see now this is looking so much better nice and flat and when i paint this all you're not even going to be able to see it down here is so much better too. Looking beautiful, it's so beautiful. Okay, we are gonna do a coat of this primer, flat black, and then I also have basically the same color, but it's a satin, which I think will be a nice sheen to kind of finish it all in. Ventilation is very important when spray painting. can down. While that primer dries, I'm heading out to the hardware store to pick up the wood that will make the railing topper. With Austin's help, we're gluing several boards together and clamping them to dry, and here is why. So what we needed essentially was a wooden topper that would sit over top of the railing, sturdy like that, so almost in like a U-shape pattern. So we had a couple of options on how to do that. First would be just taking like a really thick, tall piece of wood and like digging out a channel underneath so that it could sit over the railing. The piece of wood to begin with would be so expensive and I don't necessarily have the tools to create a really nice channel running underneath it. So we have a better plan. 
I've got two pieces of six inch wood on either side here and then two pieces of five inch wood in the center. We glued it all up, we're clamping it together and we're essentially creating our one long board that has that nice channel underneath which the railing will sit in here. <laughs> it ain't cute right now, it's covered in glue and it's not even but I think that's okay. When we cut it up, sand it down, and we have plans to put a nice top piece on, I'm thinking it's gonna look really good. Or I'm hoping. So, uh, <laughs> fingers crossed. Okay, primer on the railing is now dry. Now let's get it actually painted. Okay, so the last time we had a little floor sit down heart to heart chat, it was when I was working on the robot bar cart and I was also being personally victimized by angled cuts. And I'm finding myself in the same situation again. So last time we talked about this wooden top piece to the railing, I was gluing all of the boards together to make one nice beam that had a little kind of groove in the bottom for the railing to sit into. It was looking so good, but then it came time to actually cut the pieces into the different sizes I needed, and that's where things went south. <laughs> so this railing is in a Z formation, so there's two should be really nice 45 degree angle turns in it. It was supposed to be as easy as setting the saw to a 45 degree cut and then piecing it all together, but uh, it just never goes that way, does it? <laughs> Right? So, I just don't feel like I should be the voice of wisdom here on how I did this. So I'm gonna skip all that nonsense because that part of this project almost broke me. Um, I went through a little bit of a breakdown getting through it last night, but here we are. So I put the pieces on, I did a ton of sanding and a ton of wood filling the places where the angles just weren't right but it's in a place that I'm feeling good about, thank goodness, because I didn't know if we would ever get to this moment. <laughs> and this wooden piece is secured in place via screws through this top metal bar straight into the wood. This is how it's looking, and now I'm ready to stain the whole thing. And that's all we're gonna say about that, because I just wanna keep moving on to the rest of this project. I previously used the two-in-one version of this product for the trim in the first half of this makeover. I'm gonna use the regular stain for this because I really care about this looking perfect. <laughs> the amount of work I put into it last night. So we're gonna do regular stain, let that dry, and then do a bunch of clear coats of a poly on top to make it beautiful. Good morning. Okay, I got this all done last night. It's looking so good, but you'll notice it's not screwed into place yet where it needs to be because we are not done with the ladder shenanigans, guys. I still need to access this wall because today, this wall here, we are doing a gallery wall. Okay, so let me just show you what I'm working with. The house is a disaster right now, as it always is mid-project. Over here, I have pulled up every single piece of art and picture frame that I had in that storage room from part one. And it's here because it's gonna go up there. So typically to do a gallery wall, I would use the paper template method. I can point you to a video where I did this in my last home and it worked really well. But considering the scale of the gallery wall I'm attempting to do today, I don't have that much scrap paper and I just feel like that would take me forever to cut out all the pieces. So I came up with a method that I think is easier. Maybe. I took a picture of the wall behind me brought it into Photoshop and then added a grid on top of it so I could then bring in a photo of every single piece of art that I wanna hang and arrange it on the wall to scale. 
And trust me, I played around with this like for so many hours last night because I wanted it all to fit kind of nicely in a grid system and have all the colors look good. And now I'm hoping I can reverse do the math to figure out the spacing of this on the wall. My grid had each square representing two inches. So if I've done this right, it means this calendar should start at two inches in and two inches up. And then the rest should just all follow suit. Okay. <laughs> One done. Next. Is this where I need the ladder already? <laughs> If you guys are following our TikTok, shameless plug, check it out here, then you would have seen the follow-up to the whole saga journey that I had with these art prints where I almost bid $500 on them on an online auction. Check out that video linked below. Luckily I didn't because I ended up getting two of them for a much better price on Marketplace weeks later. And I have them framed here and I'm so glad that they're finally gonna live somewhere in my house. Ah! If I don't break the frames first, come on. When I was planning out this gallery wall digitally, I felt like I just needed more color. A lot of my old art was very minimal in palette. My vibes are ever changing, so <laughs> I wanted to get some new art. I didn't love anything I was really seeing online that led me to the thought of like, why not just make my own that is exactly what I need for this wall? And so we did that. <laughs> the first print is this giant one I had printed to fit this frame that I got literally off the side of the road. The back is so beat up, but it was free and you don't say no to free glass and chrome. This piece is so sick. I worked with Emma on our team to make this come to life and it's actually on our site right now as a digital print if you'd like to print it yourself and have it as a part of your home on a gallery wall or as a single piece because as a standalone moment, I love her. I did it, it's been done, everything should be easy now. <laughs> Look how good that's looking! Are you joking me right now? Vibes, immaculate. And we did this one, which is an ode to the iconic floor lamp that everybody's first home had. Sound off in the comments if you had this lamp. We did it in the style of like a retro furniture advertisement. I am truly obsessed. Info on where to find these prints are in the description below. Gallery wall is done, and I have never been more grateful to say goodbye to a ladder before. <laughs> this isn't goodbye forever, this is until next time, because we know we're gonna need her again, but Please, I need a break. So all that's left to do now is slide that railing into place one final time and screw it down. Let us all just have a moment of reflection of how this space looked literally two and a bit weeks ago. It has done an entire 180 transformation. This space feels so incredibly different in the best way possible. It's light, it's bright, it's sunny. There is so much color and joy in this area of my home where there wasn't much before. And my goodness, this might be my new fave. I say this all the time. But honestly, I think it's because I didn't know that I could do so much with one single corner of a space. This wasn't an entire room makeover, but this might have involved more work than some of my room makeovers have before because, oh my God, we welded a railing. Never done that before. Add that to the resume, the LinkedIn, if you will. I wanna know if you enjoyed this journey. What was your favorite part about it? What would you have done differently? Leave me all your thoughts in the comments below. And I now need to go figure out what part of my house we're gonna tackle next. Actually, you know what? I know what it is and you guys know it too. A specific room of doom that is uh, ongoing and we're gonna get back to it, baby. If you wanna see that, make sure you're subscribed and if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's because you aren't subscribed and you aren't up to date on our videos and that's all I'm gonna say.
Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. Go watch the makeover that I did of my staircase in my last house. It has a lot of the same themes as this one, but it's an entirely different vibe, and maybe you'll like that one better, to be honest. <laughs> All right, see you later, bye. And the very last one that I framed was replacing Miss Ellie, Miss Stevie, welcome to the wall.